call, please. Dixon here. Johnston here. Carrillo here. Lorik here. Kavich here. Ruzikowski here. Corral here. Super here. Um, has everybody had a chance to uh, review the minutes of June 13th? To Dick will make a motion that we approve the minutes of the June 13th, 2017 meeting. Different seconds. Roll call. Dickman I. Johnston I. Trello I. Lorik I. Kavich I. Ruzikowski I. Corral I. Super I. Chandler I. Significant common council actions. Carrie, you ready? Council approved the following, an ordinance amending section 170313 sub c to allow licensed tattoo and or body piercing establishments as conditional uses in the B2 community business district, a resolution authorizing closing on the sale of property at 8000 South Market Street to the Waters Senior Living Holdings pursuant to the land purchase agreement, and a resolution approving an easement for pedestrian cross access with the Drexel Hotel Group for the property at 7980 South Market Street. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Carrie. Uh, we'll go right into new business. Uh, item 5A is a condition, consideration of a conditional use permit submitted by Aaron Fisher of Laser Tag Pro for an amendment to an existing conditional use permit affecting the properties at 9000 and 9001 South Nicholson. Pete. Yep, I'll take that one, Mr. Mayor. Um, as you stated, the applicant is requesting an amendment to the existing conditional use permit for the properties at 9000 and 9100 South Nicholson Road. Currently, the conditional use permit allows for the operation of an indoor recreation facility, the Laser Tag Pro. Uh, at this point, back at that time, they talked about a future build out of the whole site, which eventually would have an outdoor recreation facility to be as part of this, an outdoor play field. I think they used the term battlefield, which wasn't uh, well received as a name, so now they, it's now labeled as play field. Uh, and so before that could even happen, we just kind of do a little uh, backing up on the, how we got to this point. We amended the code for the M1 district to allow outdoor and indoor conditional or uh, recreational facilities as a conditional use in the M1 district. And so at this time, the applicant is now ready to uh, expand their, their operation from indoor family entertainment uh, center, the FEC as uh, stated in your report, and now looking to ask for the conditional use to allow for an outdoor recreational facility. Now, right now they do, fall into the manufacturing use with uh, research and development and manufacturing of laser uh, uh, laser guns, you know, the type of thing, recreational uh, <clears throat> equipment. And then the second part is the family entertainment center. So included in your report was a conceptual map of what they could see the area looking like. Uh, in your report, they go into a little more detail about what a ninja course is, a ropes course, uh, they're here they're showing uh, sports courts i'm starting at the north end of the property and we'll work our way down uh, mini golf abutting up against the parking lot that currently exists and then to the south is identified as the play field where they would have outdoor uh, laser gun uh, simulations they have an outdoor green space or patio to, uh, to relax and the applicant can ex uh, expand on exactly what all would be there there's the indoor arena uh, there's the office uh, party room and then the southern end would be the big game hunt now keep in mind this is a concept plan there are no setbacks no parking uh, regulations are being taken into consideration at this time so this is their big picture this is you know if they could do everything they wanted this is what they would like to see uh, but parking restrictions are no requirements as well as buffer yards if you remember we had a 20-foot setback plus a 30-foot uh, a 30 foot setback plus a 20 foot buffer yard setback requirement so they're not really showing how far back these are from their lot line so just want to keep in mind that this isn't any approval for what is shown in this concept plan uh, that would be at a different time if the common council were to approve the conditional use for an outdoor recreation facility the applicant would have to come back and then provide much more detail as to what these uh, activities are what are the customer base? Because we have to figure out parking. If you had everybody at this location, right now we're unsure if they have adequate parking to meet everything that they want to have uh, going on at this location. Uh, in addition to the conditional use for an outdoor recreation facility, they also are asking for a change in their hours of operation. And so um, in the conditions and restrictions, I highlighted the changes that they're proposing. Originally, 
the hours of operation are going to be Thursday and Friday from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. with 11 a.m. starts on Saturday and Sunday with uh, ending times on Saturday at 11 p.m. and Sunday at 9 p.m. Now they're requesting to change it from Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And then Saturday would be 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. and Sunday from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, staff does have concerns with this request to change. Uh, it is close to the recreation or to the residential to the south, and staff would recommend not amending the hours of operation as being requested. Um, so if just to briefly go over the conditions and restrictions that are being amended on page one, highlighted conditional use would now say indoor and outdoor recreation facility is a conditional use on the site. And then the other changes to the conditions and restrictions would be on page five, section eight, which is the hours of operation, sub C. Uh, staff is recommending against those changes. However, it is being requested. And then section 10 permitted uses would add bullet point C, outdoor recreation facilities. Keeping in mind that this is just a, a concept and not a complete site plan review at this time, staff recommends that the plan commission recommends that the common council approve the amendment to the conditions and restrictions as part of the conditional use permit allowing an outdoor recreation facility on the properties at 9000 and 9100 South Nicholson Road after a public hearing. Thank you, Pete. Um, <clears throat> before I open it up for questions and comments from uh, the commission, we do have a couple of speakers uh, if you'd like to approach, Mr. Mark Verhalen. Oh, okay, just hold tight. Real quick. All right. It's just, we get just a couple of clarifications before we hear this. Pete, um, the current hours available, we see the request. Can you point me in the right direction where I missed that? I mean, I see the manufacturing division, but what what is staff recommending to keep? Keep it as is. So it would be Thursday and Friday from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., and then Saturday would be 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and then Sunday would be 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay, and second question then, as far as tonight and with what we hear tonight, we're basically just approving the type of use. All of our concerns about how we manage that type of use are all at the next step. Yes, I, I mean, right now it's concept, right now it's just outdoor recreation. So at, at a future site plan, you would... Okay, sorry, yes. a little sidebar all of a sudden. That's okay. <laughs> um, you, can, you can include in the conditions and restrictions other limitations of where the outdoor recreation facilities could we, be. We could do that tonight yes. so they know, understand what our thought process is. Yes, you, could, you can make it more restrictive. This is what they're requesting. You could restrict it to you know, the northern half, southern half. You, know, you could have additional. Offers the whole thing. We can discuss yeah. all that at this one. Yes. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Mark. Okay. Mark for Halen, 1200 East Ryan Road. Um, I own the property uh, directly across the street uh, from the proposed facility, and um, I did do some, some homework on kind of some of the things that they're requesting here, and specifically would be the outside uh, laser tag portion of it, but um, there's some other things that I've just seen uh, with some of the other requests here that I might have an issue with as well. But uh, specific to the laser tag, um, I, I called the uh, FAA because I mentioned in the past when they came for their conditional use originally a couple of years ago when I was <clears throat> sitting alderman that uh, because of the proximity to Mitchell Field, um, the airport has control of the airspace within five miles of the airport. And we're within that five miles by more than a mile or a mile and a half. And the facilities in real close proximity to the incoming and outgoing flight path of various airlines and military aircraft and whatever. But um, in my discussions with the people from the FAA, um, they had some pretty uh, vocal concerns, I would say, about the outside laser tag portion of it. Um, because when you have people outdoors with, with laser pointers or whatever, they do have issues with these nationwide and they do have a special um, office that deals with laser issues specifically down in Texas and I talked to them and they said that with, uh, with this type of facility unless they could guarantee that um, any, any 
uh, pointing of lasers or whatever would be contained to this area, they would not be supportive of it at all. So that would mean if there's a 14-year-old kid and you know just messing around, and they happen to point something like this at an aircraft coming in, they would call the tower. The tower calls Oak Creek Police. The police department goes over there. It's a federal offense. So um, you know we've had issues in the past with not as serious as what could happen here, but uh, where somebody didn't dot the I's and cross the T's before they came before uh, commission and. Um, one was the city of Oak Creek, and it, it goes back a few years, but uh, with our communications tower, they wanted to put it on fire station number three. After it was all built, they found out that they couldn't build a communications tower tall as enough to make it work for what we wanted to do for the city of Oak Creek. So, um, you know, you don't have to be an a, a, a expert at things, but it, it pays to do the homework before you make a move on some of these things. So that was my first concern. Uh, and I think that's a real serious one because if uh, the board or, or, or the common council would approve something like this knowing that there may be issues, um, I don't want to see the city and get involved with any type of lawsuits or anything either because everyone knows there's issues that the federal government may have problems with this and if something like that would go forward, city could be probably held liable. But um, moving on, I guess the only other thing I, I got is with uh, uh, maybe the outdoor hunting area which is right in back of the residences there and having somebody out there um, doing a simulated lion hunt or whatever it's going to be at 11 o'clock at night on a weekend I don't I don't think that would be conducive to being friendly to the neighbors there and the, the last point I'd like to bring up is uh, when the last uh, business was in there it was green man uh, they were given a three-year window to hook up to city sewer with that facility because uh, the one building has a, a mound system and the other one has a holding tank and if they're going to have a lot of people using this facility day in and day out uh, those facilities should be hooked up to city sewer and um, to my knowledge the past owner never did hook up to sewer with either one of those uh, facilities so you're still looking at a holding tank in the one facility and a, and a mount system in the other. So I would hope that that would get changed moving forward as well. And, and the last thing is, um, I see it's that they're, they're looking at doing a lot of stuff here, but uh, the previous owner left the, the outside property in pretty much disarray. There's debris and junk laying all over, leftover from the business that was there. And that stuff is still... Uh, there and these guys have owned the property for over a year and nothing's been cleaned up yet. It's still pretty much looks like it's kind of abandoned. <laughs> screen fences have not been kept up. They had a screen fence in front and that's fallen down. So I mean you, you can see right through the screen fence and see all the junk and stuff that's sitting in the back. So I mean there it hasn't even been an attempt to clean up the grounds before they move on to the next thing. So um, that's all I got for now. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next if Mr. Dennis was a different sub the second one okay uh with that um we'll open it up to the council i'm sure they're going to have the applicant come up so you guys will get your say so um questions from commission chossing i have a question for the applicant yes uh name and address for the record please aaron fisher 38 uh 3845 <laughs> west forest hill avenue Joe McGeorge, 5228 South 8th, Milwaukee. Can you provide a little more information on what will be out there and what the plans are for your customer? Well, our, our initial plan actually, neck between building where it says indoor arena and office party building, we want to build about 10, about 10 by 12 structures. This is one story kind of initial battle play area that we have. So. Um, but I mean, it's 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 barrels, it's buildings. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of structures. We might use things like old cars, pull them in there to make up a kind of a cityscape. That's some of our plans for for the play field. Um, I mean, we kind of want it to be like a city back there. You know, you've got all those similar to what you'd see in a paintball or airsoft. Those businesses have been around a long time, so you try to create some kind of cool play field for the kids to run around in, and us, the big kids. And we also see uh, courts out there. So, you know, 
support. Yeah, so we want to, I mean, I, there's a lot of space. I mean, another thing it's important to keep in mind, that's 13 acres. There's actually in that picture, um, I put a Google map line in there to show actually where our thing, it's almost 100 feet. Um, you can And you can scale this out to kind of, kind of give some perspective how big, but there's a lot of space here. You know, so we're, um, uh, Pete recommended like, hey, try to think of everything you could want to do here. So we were trying to, you know, what kind of stuff would we want to do here? Um, the play field's the, the major thing for us because that's our wheelhouse. Um, but we, we have space where we could put basketball courts. We talked about maybe an outdoor dodgeball course, uh, things like that. Um, mini golf. I mean, it, there's a pretty extensive lift. And, and then the ninja course slash, I don't know if you guys ever heard of like a Tough Mudder or Spartan Race. Um, it's kind of like an obstacle course that it's like, you know, they train and that's another thing we would like to do there. So, you know, place for people to burn calories. <laughs> and can you also provide a little more information on change in hours of operation? Yeah. So our, actually our, a last meeting, we had a change that was even recommended, I believe by the mayor, but I don't think it got, and it's my fault. Cause I don't think I said something. So just kind of better understanding the process. So we, we first off can do corporate parties. Okay. So we want to be able to do that during the day. Like we did a Bloomells, their garden landscape center. They came at noon. We couldn't even do that. You know, they came during the week on a Tuesday. I think they picked a day. They knew the rain, it was raining. So they brought their staff in. So we want to be able to run. I mean, this is a little bit more of a full fledged center compared to our existing center. And we want to have the freedom um, to be able to do that. Plus, um, when I was talking about this adventure course, people like to, like, one of our envisions for this is a place people who like to do active kind of workout could actually come. And they're not going to, they don't want to come at 4 o'clock. They like to come before work. So we thought we weren't going to try to push it too early. I know some place would open up at 6, but we wanted to be able to maybe facilitate that because as we kind of gone on, we thought there might be a good opportunity because there's actually no place you can go to do like an outdoor exercise maybe except by the lake and they might have a little station we thought hey people would want to do this a part of their you know crossfit routine and um things like that so that was another reason we wanted to get earlier time but mostly because we we want to do like the corporate parties and we we lose out on that if we can't do that if we have to push them till after work and there's people they they'll do it right during the day and we're losing out schools field trips all that kind of stuff where it'd be during the day we wouldn't be able to do it so limits us to the weekend and just a little more information on the later time Times pushed out. And you want to comment sure, on that? Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, with the later times, that that's more of maybe a typical like family entertainment center hours. Like if you look at the uh, like the bowling center that's on Howell. I mean, people are going to go there during the evenings. You know, so people are off work, their kids are out of school, um, especially towards the end of the week. They see uh, that time to to be able to go spend time with their families. It's it's sort of like a different type of group that that you know we'd be serving during that time. So. We really think that you know, the corporate parties are, are at, uh, a group where we can make a good amount of money. We're making a significant investment in this property. Honestly, we already have in the two buildings. They're pretty much completely renovated. Um, we've we've spent a lot of money on that so far. Um, they're very tasteful, very well done. In fact, people that have come from the city, it, you know, the comments that they made, the inspectors, things like that. Wow, you guys have really done a nice job. You know, this place is set. Yeah, right. So. Right, so we're getting getting there with the outdoor, but we do things well. You know, we sell the stuff all, all over the world. People love our stuff. We do a good job with every, you know, thing we do and make, and we're gonna we intend to do that with the outdoor, just so we did with the indoor. Thank you. Um, I guess I'm confused about one the John, see if you got the answer, but the hours you said you couldn't do. Oh, yeah. Okay, eight to six is currently. It goes back to my original question. What it says is eight to six for the manufacturer. And, and that's what's recommended for everything is Monday through Friday, eight to six. Is that, am I missing something, Pete? Um, the right now, the way they have it set up in the in the conditions and restrictions, that the manufacturing division is split out Monday through Friday from eight a.m. to six p.m. And then the family entertainment center, originally when it was proposed, was just the indoor was basically Thursday through Sunday operations. Now they're looking to expand it all week long and then start early in the morning. So, I mean, there's a couple of ways we, you know, we could do it. Carrie and I were just talking, you know, right now we just have it lumped as the family entertainment center. We could have those as the hours of operation for the indoor FEC. And then you could potentially create a whole new 
outdoor FEC hours of outdoor. operation. I think it's, it makes it a little more convoluted, but you could potentially split them out into two different operations. I guess my question is, what's Thursdays different than Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? Why? I think it was, I, if I, this is me using, you know, going on memory here, there was concerns of having this type of commercial endeavor in such close proximity to residential. So the idea was, all right, you're not going to be getting cars up and down Nicholson Road, Monday, you know, seven days a week. It was going to be a weekend kind of thing. And they're going to come in uh, reservations. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Adam or Joe. Aaron, sorry, and then, um, and you know, you would have 15, 20 people in an hour. And then after that, they would leave in another group. So you'd have like waves of people and hopefully it would be in a way where it'd be more than one person per car. You wouldn't have, no, you'd have less than, you know, 10 cars per hour coming to the site. So that seemed reasonable at that time that it shouldn't have a large impact on the neighborhood. So I think that was some of the, the thought process of why it was just on the weekends. I think uh, for you guys, I mean, um, it can fill in maybe some of the gaps I have. There, there was a rationale as to why it was Thursday through Sunday, and not seven days. So, and that that is, um, I would say, you know, at that time we were making an application for the indoor, the the, um, the recreational indoor. So, and that that's maybe where that's relevant. You know, we wanted to make an app like you know, the hours or or what we expect were for what you know the conditional use for the indoor that we were applying for so now you know this outdoor component obviously we're adding more amenities we're adding more attractions and we can serve more people and so you know i guess it'd be logical that you'd expect to serve more traffic down the road well, let me say this too we also a majority of our business is weekend business but we don't want to limit ourselves and what we can do um because we do do business during, I mean, we have customers that come and see us. We have uh, two different customers come in Thursday um, just to learn about our gear, learn about our software. And, you know, that's another thing this provides for us is like seeing people play it in action. And, and what makes this unique compared to uh, other laser tag venues is most laser tag isn't indoor uh, technology. We focus a ton on outdoor. Our stuff absolutely lurks indoors. That's the easiest environment to work under. One really exciting point of this property was being able to do these outdoor games because that's really relative to our research. I mean, we have a consumer product. We just got our first thousand on a boat uh, or that came from a boat on Monday. And um, that is a product we will believe will be like, as you guys are familiar with Nerf, that's what we believe it's going to be because laser is safe. There's no projectiles. And I can, I don't know if you guys want me to address the airline stuff at all. Yeah. And maybe Joe can, cause he's actually a pilot with 15 years experience. He taught college. He won't tell you that, but I will. Yeah, I can, I can speak on that actually. I'm extremely familiar with those types of roles and, and uh, the problems associated with that. Um, so tell me, uh, tell him at least tell me your credentials. You're sure. Yeah. Saying. So uh, I'm a fully rated commercial pilot. I have 2,500 hour flight hours and uh, the, you know, I, I was going to just met, uh, comment on, on some of the comments that were made earlier. The, the laser pointer that the FAA is concerned with, um, they have to do with people. They're like, they're like high powered uh, visible lasers. The problem is people flash those or they, they shine them at airplanes. They hit them in the, if they shoot them into the cockpit, it can actually temporarily blind the pilot which is usually on landing and that's a major problem because you're trying to land a big airplane, you know. But um, actually, uh, that, that is like a focused, probably class three or better laser that you'd be using. Um, what we use in our products, it's actually an FDA certified um, class one infrared laser, which means it's not even visible light. It, it can't blind you or flash you or anything like that. Um, and so it, it's totally safe. I mean, it's ice. You're shooting them at people constantly. You can't have a laser tag device that, you know, is going to be dangerous for somebody's eyes inherently, right? Because if I'm playing you in laser tag, and you, that would be a major problem. So if you point the laser tag at me, will you see the light on me? You, there's a, there is some, there is a couple of LEDs where you would see a flash. You like probably wouldn't flash. see it. It's not like one of the lasers that you point at somebody and you see the little red dot or you play with a cat or okay. something like that. It's not that. It's an infrared beam. And even at that, we pass it through a lens which disperses the light. So when it gets to you, it's probably the size of a basketball. And even at that, you can't see it because it's infrared light and we can't perceive well, that light. people that are back here that are going to be on their, in their backyards or their porches, 
um, is that going to be broken up? You feel be, with the trees and the oh, woods? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you can. Yeah, I mean, you would. There, there is vegetation. I don't know if you can kind of make it out. I think there's yeah, like there's two rows of vegetation uh, with the house to the south, and then across the street, there's there's more vegetation there. So, you know, we don't expect even any light pollution or where eye protection when you. No, use it so, no. so it's not it, it has to be totally safe i mean we're giving this to kids to play laser tag right. with I each get other it. question yeah. answered i just yeah. want to understand yeah. that, that yes. puts it in perspective yeah. yeah yeah so and we have fda certification and all this kind of thing a session number and this kind of thing yeah we had to go through it. a big process actually to do that we're one of the few you got to be on the microphone sorry. Sir. Oh, sorry. yeah with the fda class one laser we had to go through a whole process worked with a high like a high level laser consultant to get our products approved i mean you can use an infrared LED. it's really a glorified tv remote that's the best description and no one worries about a tv remote it's really the same thing it shoots a little farther than your regular tv remote what what is the distance that your laser we'll call it projects so we sell it as in the worst conditions which is full sunlight no clouds in the sky you're going to get about 600 feet of range so we're trying to always get more range but once you push the range you start to now you're class b then you're going to class two you know it it goes up so we've certified it that's more than enough so that's kind of the worst so that that's on a typical day like we're looking out the window at correct yeah, well, yeah. what about at night it shoots farther at night, but it's again, it's nothing you see. The only thing you'll ever see is like a like someone turned on a flashlight, not even a bright one. It's just little LEDs that do the flash from when we fire. It's just like a muzzle flash, we call yeah, it. So essentially, if you were standing 600 feet away, you you wouldn't see anything. You you would not know in any way that there was light coming that direction. It would be, it would be so diffuse. First of all, that the the actual infrared laser portion is non-visible to our eyes to begin with. You can put your eye right up to the to where it's being emitted. You won't see any light because it's infrared. And then the LEDs are just kind of like a like a muzzle flash. What does it, it look like know. somebody's walking with a flashlight in the woods? A flashlight would be brighter. Okay. Yeah, that's what about the, um, the big game hunt area? You know, being positioned right behind the houses. What if you... I know this is only conceptual. What if this was flopped over to uh, the uh, the other side of the east side towards the tracks? Well, we want to do some other things kind of in that back area with the play field that I thought were better for the neighbors. So to kind of describe the big game hunt, what my vision is that is picture a golf cart that can drive eight people. Okay, picture the best way to describe it is like a Disney World attraction. Like, hey, all right, explorers. It's like kind of picture it's more of a kid's like a little kid's attraction. Like I'm gonna go, I have a boy, he's five years old, a daughter, it's 11. Like my son, Axon, is gonna be excited to sit there with dad and there'll be the driver and you go through and shoot at stationary targets. So it's it's a couple people on a golf, electric golf cart that drive through. So to me, I think that will be quieter than having a laser tag experience going on right there. Cause we would send them through in waves. So park, next person goes through and there is a good as i said there is actually a good amount of space like i, I tried to keep that in mind you know with our neighbors there's a good amount of space there's mm -hmm. like it's like more than 50 feet definitely a hundred feet i think from his house if i measured where i envisioned this going if not farther i think that first dot in there from dot to dot is a hundred feet so i guess it's not as close as it looks on a picture but if you go there's good vegetation and stuff there so i don't really see it being but a distraction to the neighbors. And also, I'll comment, in the morning is really when we, like the, the you see the adventure course, the ninja course, um, that, that's, uh, you know, we, we, we are looking for these morning hours because we think there might be people that are interested in fitness, you know, people doing CrossFit and all this kind of thing. They want to come run the course. We expect if they come, they're probably coming in the morning. And so that's why we kept that to the north because if there's going to be, you know, maybe more, uh, people present in those morning hours it's probably going to be because of that so and then there, there's really nothing to the north i think it's like preserve or or uh wetland or whatever it's called to the north of there so there's no uh residential area can you address tomorrow, go ahead chris uh, can you address the um the holding pond and and sewer whether that's been connected and then also so actually we just had our um uh, the mound system just fully serviced. Um, it actually turns out that it's a 3,600 gallon, at least what they told me, 3,600 gallon tank, um, which apparently I've never had a mound before, but that's quite large. He said they're at, on average usually like 1,500. So um, it's a large 
you know, tank, a large mound system. We actually think that, you know, it really will facilitate what uh, we need. Maybe you guys could know more about that than I do, but I know it's big, so. We, we would <laughs> like to see the sewer hooked up, but it's really not the topic right now. Right. Oh, so sure. let's kind of focus on on the issue at hand, and that's the outdoor play recreation. I'm just interested in how you're going to light up your facility at night, what you're going to do so it won't affect the neighbors because, you know, they're a little concerned about some of that lighting in the area. Is it up? Is it going to be on ground level type? You're going to have to have some lighting to get yeah. around. I mean, any any ty type of attraction, sports courts, mini golf, those all, all need lighting. Um, we will need some lighting for our play fields, but, I mean, that's something people play in pitch dark arenas with, you know, black lights and smoke. Um, we really envision um, – I mean, obviously, we want to provide ad adequate lighting based on whatever the lighting requirements are. So it's hard for me to say because I'm not, you know, an electrician that handles that side of things. But um, the big game hunt doesn't need really a lot of lighting. It's probably the playing field and the sports courts, like things like the mini golf that, that would. So I know kind of our initial plan for this first little battlefield experience that we wanted to make out of temporary structures between those two buildings. There's some lighting that's already exist on the buildings that – shine down on those parking lots so we wanted to use that space because they had existing lighting kind of for our, for our initial just to get the outdoor going um and um and then that gives us time to kind of obviously do these in phases yeah. so do what's necessary for each phase and i i think you know at one point in, in oh, building somebody. when this property was built it was a bus yard and it had outdoor lights lighting. and since then somebody's stripped all the wire out of the <laughs> we're gonna have to redo all that but you know i think it probably would in terms of lighting be yeah. not more than that and i think it was if you look uh, on the you'd have to have an diagram. approved lighting plan yeah, yeah. right we need to get that either right. way so oh. i'd assume right. it'd be something like that throughout the field so I, I were just thinking that you may have some ground lighting and then of course you could have some power lighting and so forth depending on the games that you're yeah yeah play. sure yeah i mean when, when you're playing laser tag i mean out the, yeah. outside when you're playing laser tag outside i mean we don't need you know the guns have lights on them too you know so that helps with team recognition, red team, blue team. Matt? Um, I guess trying to circle back to the, the big picture, my concerns um, as some of the questions that could come up, uh, and I think we shared these when we approved the indoor, is that we'd have some concerns trying to make this work. Um, and it's hard because it's conceptual, but my, I think a lot of our concerns are what that buffer to the residents on the – southwest side outside the big game hunt is actually going to be and, and how close that should be um, is something that I guess we'd need more details. Sure. Um, I think the other piece where just initially and, and even if we come to grips with that where I have some concerns are not the weekday daytime traffic or hours. I, I don't see a problem with that, especially when you look at, I don't know, we used to have 100 school buses leaving there early every morning and yeah. Uh, a lot more traffic than this site, so I, I'm not as concerned about that because I think it's a, an improvement from that. Um, but we weren't running those school buses after 9 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock at night, whether it be weeknights, weekends, or whatever. So I, I, I think from where I'm sitting, trying to um, – I don't have problems with the, the weekday hours, but I think anything after uh, 9 o'clock is a struggle for me to understand how it makes sense in that neighborhood. And only at that point, with the proper buffering – that's going to be needed. Um, I think some of the things that you're looking at in these outdoor uh, tough mudder type things and all those, I think those are all really active, good uses that are probably out there. I don't think they're heavy traffic uses, yeah. but I think if I were over there, I'd be worrying about how I, I, I envision this property and seeing the facilities from the streetscape looking a lot better than it does and having yeah. all your things on the inside for yep. the people that are into that and that the neighbors are seeing a finished product from the outside and that's buffered and that works within hours and, and, and my hours really are more on the PM where I, where I have concerns. Okay. Chris, you got one last question? Um, I was just going to go back to the uh, property upkeep just to make sure that that can be addressed. I know that was brought up by uh, Mr. Verhalen. What, what do you have to say? Yeah, so we just bought a, a brand new 
50 Toro zero turn motor mower. So we definitely have not put a ton of energy on the outside because we had to get moved out of our other place. We just moved out a month ago. So like we're in the transition process. Um, we did just buy a new mower. Our neighbor was nice enough and came in because that really tall grass. He had a tractor. Ron came and cut all the grass for us uh, in, in the inside of the space. So now we can keep on top of it. I, I mean, this week, one of my guys, one of my arena staff, He's coming every day. He's starting to take away all the trees that have grown up along the fence. We just actually this week looked at brand new, uh, the, the netting. Actually, my guy came in yesterday, Aaron, we can buy it at Walmart. I said, I want black because there's green now. And at one time we said, hey, let's try to zip tie it up until we buy new stuff. Wind came, pff, we're going to just put brand new stuff up. So that also another thing that I'm going to submit in a drawing is between the two buildings, we want to redo the fence area there. We want it to look like a nice white fence with a nice gate because that's going to be between building um, the indoor arena and the office. There's a section of fence there that the concrete's kind of heaved and it's there's a gates there. We want to actually put a nice new fence there. So we're in the process of at least we've been cutting our grass. We've been cutting the grass on the hills. We want to make it look nice. Obviously, this is a family entertainment center. We want it to look good. So we have bought stuff just in the last two weeks, guarding equipment, all that kind of stuff. So And actually, we... I think the comment was made that we've owned this for you. We, we actually acquired it in October, and we didn't move in until November. So we have the two buildings really fully renovated in that, that period of time. And so now we're moving on to the next phase, you know, with the outdoor. If you can just bring, keep that in the, yep. yeah. on the radar there. Uh, Wally? Okay. <clears throat> I want to go back to the, <clears throat> the issue of the lasers again. And uh, first of all, you gave a very good explanation. But I guess I want to ask Mark. I can't see him there. Uh, you said you talked to the FAA. Did, did they Microphone. say? Microphone. Come on up, Mark. I, I, did they say that there were different levels of lasers? They or said. Did they just overall comment? Well, like I said, I talked to their laser specialist because evidently they have a regular task force or office in Dallas, Texas. That that's what they deal with is these type of things, not specifically the laser tag thing, but just the laser issue in general, and. Um, the, the, the feedback I got from them is the only way that the airport could support this or the FAA could support it was if they knew that there was su sufficient containment where they knew that no stray things could actually project past the area that they're using for this. So that in his mind that would have, would have been like, um, you know, extensively you know, yeah. uh, a big barrier or some type of fence so that they, you know, that they knew that everything that was being produced out of this facility stays within that area. So, you know, a five foot fence maybe wouldn't fit the bill, but maybe a berm or something would have or a higher fence on top of it. But I'm not familiar with the codes that Oak Creek has if you'd have to require them to have, have a taller fence than what we would allow or whatever. But I mean, that's that's up to the plan commission and common council, it's not up to me. But um, that was the feedback I got from from that office down there. And I'm, I'm waiting for written correspondence back from him because he had to finalize whatever they would wanna, wanna see there with a supervisor. And I'm waiting to hear back from, cause I only got a hold of him uh, Friday <clears throat> mid afternoon and um, I talked to him again yesterday, and the, the fellow I talked to in, in Dallas, he said he had to talk to his supervisor, and then they were going to email me okay. something I, back as to as to more what they'd like to see more specific. So I'm I'm just kind of relaying the initial feedback from them to you guys tonight. So I think I would like to also hear you know uh, from somebody from the airport and hear the same you know uh, presentation that you gave I, this evening. I, I do agree. I, I think we have to probably investigate that. And really get somebody that has some authority with it, um, rather than parties we work with. I, okay. I mean, it's interesting both ways, but yeah. I think that's something we need to research. Could, could, could that be a part of the the, the, the conditions. next conditions and restrictions where we we request that? I mean, that's what was my original question at the start. But, let me ask you this, Pete. Every piece they do here, will they come back for approval on? Yes. Anytime they have to modify the site, so, they would have to. So come if they before. come in for the mini golf. They got to get approval. They come back for the ninja course approval. Right, and if they come, if the package deal, they want to, you know, say they want to do the north end of the of the lot first for whatever reason, you know, that would be once they actually have finalized plans that are 
reviewed. We're going to have the setbacks. You know, we have a 30-foot setback for any outdoor recreational field. Well, in addition to that, if, you manuf if a manufacturing or commercial district is abutting a residential district, there's a 20-foot buffer yard that has to be landscaped. Now, there's already a tree line there, but as part of the site plan review, we'd probably ask for additional landscaping along that, that southern, southern edge as well as making sure we have that distance. Now, being a concept plan, we don't have any measured distances. Uh, the applicant tried to show that didn't show up well on that black and white, you know, up on that screen there, there's a, a, looks like a white line, like maybe it was actually a, a photocopy error. That's a scale, scale bar there, and you can't really make out the numbers, but it is, it is uh, let's see if I can magnify it. I believe it shows from this is zero uh, Aaron was this a hundred feet the first dot right here so that's a hundred feet the lot line runs along the tree line and then overall from the edge of the road to the railroad tracks is looks like f approximately 540 feet but those would be the details that we talk about at site plan review you can have a condition of approval that we have an FAA letter of approval for this type of use you know that could be added as part of the site plan conditions of approval I'd like to also ask one more question. Not so much of you, Mark. I want to thank you. I, I've got well, I've got one more oh, comment sorry. if I if I'd be allowed to, to yeah. Well, present it. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I guess I'd just like to make it clear that um, I don't think myself or any other neighbors are are dead set against the having a venue like this. Um, you know, in our neighborhood, that's that's not why we're here tonight. I guess, but um, I guess at the end of the day, we want to make sure that. The facility that does come in is conducive and it fits in with the neighborhood and um, the future neighborhood because there's a potential for big development across the street on my property and I'm working on that right now and you know I don't want to I don't want to see um, a venue there that's gonna you know affect people that are gonna move into the neighborhood and, and we just want to keep it a, a, a nice nice neighborhood with with a friendly type of thing no matter what kind of venue goes into this property but um, we want to make it better than what it is of course and better than what we had in the past because we had a business here that that really didn't treat the neighborhood with any respect at all and like I said there's some residual debris and stuff laying in the back of this property from uh, that that business as well and, and and I would hope that these guys would make an effort to clean that stuff up it's inside the fence but I mean it's it's there's a lot of stuff back there and I hope when they get the sink going it that stuff gets cleaned up as well Great. Excellent. Thank you. And again, we do strive to, to find the median where everybody can coexist. So that, that's part of the reason we have these. Mr. Grundy, I know I got your slip. Come on up. Ron Grundy, 9160 Nicholson Road. Actually, that's our backyard. And uh, that property has been troubling for a very, very long time. We've had... Uh, the bus company in there and uh, when the bus company came in we we don't ever recall any meeting any plan commission meeting for the bus company they just appeared one day and then when they were gone okay the it sat for a long time and the green man came in and uh, he left that property I mean it was unbelievable what they were doing there what what I think the plan commission really has to look at first of all the hours that the operation is is planning on going on here. Uh, it's in a residential area in the middle of winter. We don't have any barrier there. What's going to be going on? Are they going to operate year round? We don't know that. What I'm saying is we don't have, you know, they're saying, well, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to build this. We're going to build that. But I don't see any concrete. This is it, you know, and where is the plan? I mean, I want to see the plan, how they're going to develop this, what's going to happen, and how is the city going to enforce it? It's just like the green man. When he was in there, there was, we tried, you try to enforce, you know, a, a mountain of elephant poop. What are we doing here? You know, what happens is, is, and when they came in and what, they're running a tidy little business there now selling those things out of there and they got the laser stuff indoors when they came in they said well we're just going to do this indoors this is what's going to happen and at that time I even expressed uh, that I think that type of activity for young people shooting at each other 
you know, I was in the military. I'm not against guns and all of this stuff, but I think it totally sends a wrong message to kids, to young people, you know, and be in Oak Creek, the city of Oak Creek. We've had uh, experiences with this kind of stuff. So uh, my thought is just, you know, I mean, we've got a laundry list of things that, you know, the lighting and all that stuff that's going to go on. But my thought is that you guys got to do your homework. Maybe come down there and take a look at what, you know, really what it is physically, what's going on, how is this, how is this going to affect or impact the neighborhood. We got maybe 80 homes going in across the street from us. Now that's going to impact the neighborhood, you know, the traffic and all of that stuff. There's all kinds of activities and things that are going on right now in this little section of Oak Creek. It was dead for a long, long time, but now things are coming alive. And I think that we just have to, uh, we have to look at uh, in the hours here and stuff like that. We have to look at all that stuff. I hope the planning commission really takes a serious look at this. What's going to happen when all this stuff gets rolling? Are we going to enforce anything? What's going on? You know, that's that's my concern. I don't know if my wife wants to say anything because it is our backyard. You didn't mention all the things uh, I noted name, here. Name, please. Carol, Carol Grundy, 60 South Nicholson Road, Oak Creek. Um, yeah, this is right in our backyard, and at 100 feet, if you go behind our yard, we have a 20-foot drive, and then there's another 20 feet to the fence, or maybe 40 feet to the fence, I'm not sure. And those bushes that you see along there, well, in winter, they're not there. I mean, you, all we see is the fence, the big, you know, the big high six-foot fence. So we see right into this yard. And... Um, being it's a residential area and there's other homes right next to us, they're going to see the same thing. Um, in winter, there's no barrier. We would be able to. We won't be able to enjoy our yard, our backyard, with all this racket going on over there and screaming and yelling. He shot this one. He shot that one. And I could just see this just happening. Um, we we have a nice quiet area right now. And then I heard there was going to be airplane fuselage hauled in so they could hide behind this and play army around that and tanks. And, um, and then I heard there was going to be ladders, up high ladders, where they could shoot from these ladders and stuff. Now, um, if that fence is only so high and they're up 15 feet, well, we're going to be able to watch them from our backyard. I really don't want to do that. And then the lighting again, it'll be in our backyard. Where is a pre-existing site where you guys can go take a look at where they already have one of these and see how it's run and what, the, what happens? Do you, do you have any address or anything of a pre-existing site that you guys can look at? I, we have not asked that question. Oh. Okay, well, maybe that would be a good idea to take a look at how they run, run their business. Thanks. Thank you, Carol. Um, Brian, anything? Um, just a couple things. Um, the city no noise ordinance runs from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. So they fall within the requirements of the noise ordinance. Um, you know, I have two kids, eight and six. I have two different sets of different laser weapons that they run in the house and play with constantly. They love this. I would, you know, get this going. I'd bring them out there. Um, I think this would be a great place for kids to come play, have fun doing it. Um, my experience in different laser gun operations, um, most of them are inside. I've never seen an outdoor course. Um, but, again, it's – I'm there with my kids. It's not an issue with the, the laser pointers. It's not a, a beam of light that you're seeing. It's more of a target that you've got on it, flashing lights going off from the guns and from the targets. Um, the big game hunt, that would be interesting if that came through. I don't see a lot of a noise or anything with that that would be like it would with the play field. I think the play field and people running around screaming. I know my kids run through the house with the laser gun screaming, yelling, they're having fun. But you would get a lot of that on that play field, which... Keep that pushed away. Yep. Um, I think we just need to work on the hours. I, I think there's an opportunity to open this up through the week so that they have the ability 
to get that in there, not limit it just to Thursday through Sunday, but what those hours are, we just need to tweak those through. Um. All right. Um, <clears throat> kind of along the same boat, I have, I have kids as well. Um, I've done the Warrior Dash, I've played paintball, so I've kind of been to courses very similar to what you're conceptualizing here. Um, there's obviously concern from residents in the area. Um, the, the laser, the lighting was already talked about. Um, I did hear that you mentioned kind of a cityscape, some old abandoned cars. Um, big concern is how the property has been treated over the years. Um, it sounds like you're putting work into the, the buildings, the main fence line and things like that. Is there anything that you have thought through as far as protecting residents from looking at junk cars and broken down buildings and that kind of stuff mm, if let me count go that route? Yeah, so to, to, there's another set of trees in between that big game hunt, okay? There's like a low spot there where waters, then there's those trees, then there's a fence. So currently with the fence, there's that, that barrier that's up, so we can put that up. Um, also, in the winter time, it's this isn't a this is not a huge thing um, in the in the winter time. So they're worried about the maybe the trees and things like that. I really um, there's a lot of space. It actually would probably be to the benefit of people to come out and actually see the space because like we have we have railroad tracks behind us, a farmer's field, a farmer's field, a house set back, probably a football field, and then no doubt Ron's house is the closest. And I I. He has come over and talked to us. Says, obviously, I want to get along with my neighbors. Obviously, I want to run this business. So, you know, you, it's a balancing act. But we do want to, we are trying to be respectful. We own a whole nother section, that outlot, that we have nothing planned for. That's just going to sit there and do nothing probably because of the neighbors, because we want to consider the neighbors that we bought, right, that we want to do something with that, that wasn't a part of the, uh, of the build. So we're trying to be, oh, that, that definitely helps. I mean, you can see the trees there's a huge tree. There's two tree lines that block the houses. And obviously this property needs work. It was a foreclosure. This, there's junk we got to throw away. We're trying to do it as fast as we can. We want to use that back area where the hand is now, where the gravel is for playing field. We want to put our first outdoor play, playing field between the buildings, a smaller one, just so we can start doing something and using the space. I got arena staff twiddling their thumbs now because we closed our arena down and we want to get them actively marketing our new business so we're um we we don't want it to look bad no doubt and i i also hope the council would consider what what happened to the past isn't us you know we we sold we we came out of our business in greenfield we've been we've come here we're trying to do things how you guys want us to do things um we even i mean you guys changed the code for the city that was awesome and obviously we're hoping to do that here there was always plans on this property to do outdoor there was never not a plan why do we need 13 acres if all we're going to use is these small buildings um we've always planned for expanding we want to build an addition in the future actually in between so most of the outdoor activity does happen in back and that's a pretty big space you got the parking lot in front we got those big rows of trees um I feel uh, that the natural landscape that's there should provide plenty of barrier already. And if, if if there's additional things we have to do, fine. Obviously, everything's budget related, but but we're willing to do that. But there is a good amount. If you see that on a colored photo, much better than my black and white one. Um, and then also, I want to comment on the laser thing. I can get you a cert, a 20-year laser certification. Actually, it helps write the laws for international independent firm. Submit you all the documentations that he submitted to the FDA. Laser tech has been around for 30 years. Outdoor laser tech has been around since 2000. So as far as there being an FDA concern, Joe taught college for 15 years. Actually, he was stupid enough to join me to leave that college job. No, but so he, I mean, as far as that, there'll be no, I, I'll rest my whole business, everything. There won't be a problem on that end. And we can provide that documentation. If you still want to get stuff from the FDA, that's fine. Or from the, from the, the yeah, F, F, FAA. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we can, but I can get you that documentation from an independent guy that did all the paperwork for our certification. So that can rest, put to rest any of that, that stuff. This has been something, like you said, you've been doing it in your house. Laser tag's been around. I played with it as a kid. We just made it cooler for this generation. So, Thank you. Uh, Chris? Pete, real quick, uh, where with this picture that's up, 
where is where are the 50 to 80 homes going to be basically Okay. This area here in the farm field over here. Right across the street from including all well, here I should say, right, Mark? Farm field and including the home down here. Hey, just very quickly, where proposed would that big game deal be? Would it be between the row of trees or behind both sets of trees? Well, looking at the the concept drawing, it looks like it was behind the one row of trees. I don't know. I'm assuming those trees are going to stay there. This yeah. is where we don't know since this isn't a site plan for just a concept plan. I mean, okay. you, you could potentially have the track go around those trees and you're shooting into the tree line where yeah. the stationary objects are, be deer, lion, <clears throat> bear. I, that's kind of what I imagined. But. And that's how I, I mapped it out that way around that. So there was some tree lines in between because I'm like, well, what are we going to do with this space? We got the neighbors there. We, like I was thinking, oh, this would be cool for a capture the flag game, but our neighbors aren't going to be happy with that. This is a way we could utilize that space with something that's quieter. It's a couple people. They go through, and it's 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 not as as rambunctious, like Brian was mentioning. And and one other comment I want to say too is that if I'm a new per, per I'm a I'm 34 years old. I have two children. If I'm going to buy a house, I think it'd be exciting to buy a house next to a, a place where a family fun center is up the road, and my kids can go play when school's out or all that kind of good stuff. So I don't know if this will be something that would make someone who bought I just bought my home in Franklin last year would make me not want I'm um, a couple houses from a park so people will be excited about that I think from a homeowner standpoint okay. one more path. yeah I guess just to reiterate um, obviously you need return on your investment but I think when we if this is approved to get to the next level uh, putting efforts into cleaning up the existing property today and getting rid of this stuff, a, it's going to advance your business more quickly, yep. and you have a lot more opportunity. I guess it's very, uh, um, it's great to hear about the development across the street and the opportunities for Mr. Verhalen's properties. I think those 80 homes and kids and all that are going to bring every bit as much noise and activity as this is, as long as it's controlled. And again, I think that um, the uh, the hours is going to be the biggest thing you're going to have to in your model to really understand because, as uh, Commissioner Johnson said, 10 o'clock is the noise. You know, we're going to want people out of there before that even hits. So I, I think um, it, planning on anything after nine o'clock at night, at least from my perspective, is going to be difficult about it in that residential. Question then: um, What if we did a? Because um, the the indoor our other hours were, was it twelve, or is it eleven? Eleven. Uh, eleven. It was a little bit longer. So, so with the outdoors, could the outdoor indoor hours? I think vary? you're gonna to want to look at that when you come to us. I think having a varied hours, although Pete said that could be a little convoluted, I think that I, I would be much more open to the indoor hours being later than the outdoor yeah. hours. I think that's gonna be a tough um, battle, and I guess we're talking yeah. about battles. Yeah, that yeah. might be a little tough. I would just keep that in mind. For and I, I could the other question I have about that too is that we one of the other things that is like our equipment does. There's a um, it's kind of like a haunted attraction. We, we have a thing, kind of like the concept of the big game hunt where you put people through like maybe during the Halloween time in the middle or something or something we want to do. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be on the edges, but you have live actors and then the, the live act, you go through and you shoot the live actors. What we Actually, the biggest laser tag attraction we know of in the world is in California, and they do something like that. So it, it, if we needed later hours, because I don't think we, we need to go to midnight. That's not really what we're looking for. So... And I, I really believe the outdoor will kind of start to shut down in that like nine o'clock time. So I, I mean, we put You're on here seasonal or, or an event. Well, that's type what I'm saying. Yeah, if we do want to do a seasonal, is that something? I think I'd have to defer to the city events. on what their options are. I mean, there's these haunted houses and things all over the place that do different hours at special times. I don't know, Pete, what the answer is. But as you were talking, I was, you know, contemplating, you know, the, what we mentioned before. Right now, on you know, Section C has manufacturing division hour set. 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we could change what's currently the family entertainment center to the indoor family entertainment center. Come up with the hours of, you know, if you want to do the Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday do 8 a.m. to, you know, there's an 11 p.m. and then the 9 p.m. You know, do those hours for indoor and then have the section of outdoor family entertainment center 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Do we have to determine those hours of tonight's act? action or can we I, to me it's i have to see more of that plan before we can really 
yeah. do that. Yeah. Well, th this is where the conditions and restrictions for hours of operation would be put it in. Uh, you know, when we do the site landscape review, the conditions of approval are typically things they can fulfill prior to getting occupancy. We can't suddenly throw at hours of operation on, on them at, at site plan review. So this would be the, the time to look at hours of operation. If you want to do have an indoor hours of operation than outdoor. Uh, from uh, enforcement, you know, a resident made a comment about how do we, how would the city enforce it? Um, 9 p.m. That's pretty, pretty straightforward. You know, if it's nine o'clock every night of the week, we don't have these uh, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., 9 p.m. You know, if they bring everything indoors by nine o'clock, we, I, I can get a complaint from Mr. and Mrs. Grundy saying it's 9.30, everyone is, you know, playing games outside while well, easily we can go out and have the PD, you know, document the operations going out there. If they're in violation, we always have that revocation process if they violate their conditions and restrictions repeatedly for hours of operation. One. So, so then we're looking tonight, Mayor, at potentially the, the highlighted things are what we're looking for. Yeah, just I mean, getting back to the but, main. But plan. we want to bounce those off of indoor and outdoor, having I, separate or not. I, I was going to state my my point of view. I I think I would split it to indoor outdoor. I think it's the yes, clearest, I quite agree, frankly. Yeah. I agree. Um, yeah. and probably the easiest to to control. Uh, as long as I got the floor, I'm just going to touch lightly. As far as the lighting goes, we're not. At least in my vision, we're not looking at lighting this up like a football field, like a stadium. Uh, I don't see the lighting being more intrusive than street lights, possibly. Uh, but again, that would be subject to a lighting plan approved by our, our electrical inspector. Um, as far as gun use, Mr. Grundy brought that up. I agree, in today's day and age, it may not be the health, healthiest thing, but it is a fact. Uh, we've been you know, I grew up playing cops and robbers and cowboys and Native Americans. And, uh, <laughs> so it, it's been going on, whether it was cap guns or play guns. Uh, this is a different form of it. Uh, that's what they do today. So Brian kind of attested to that. I think this is a very interesting use of the property. Uh, I, I think it's kind of a missing amenity. We did change things. But we do have to be very conscious of the neighbors as we put these in. That's why... My initial question was, as these play fields go in, uh, these courts go in, will we get a kick at the cat, like at the northern half, when they come in with concrete plants? Because this is conceptual. They may, you know, look at it and have a brainstorm and go, we need to flip-flop the entire thing, and vice versa, for whatever particular reason. Um, I'm concerned with the hours. Again, we have to take the residents into effect. I don't think we should limit them to Thursday through Sunday. I do think they're a business, uh, and there's potential for them to grow that way, and I think it should be a Monday through Sunday operation if they cho choose to work all those days. Um, so I would really concentrate on the hours. Uh, condition of the property that, that's kind of been beat to death. We know you guys have gotten in there. there there's a... There's a big stake in cleaning this up. We get that. You concentrated on the areas that you were going to put to work and make you money. We do want to see the rest of it cleaned up. Uh, not to say we don't have properties throughout Oak Creek that could use some cleanup. Um, so, again, to single them out. But the best thing you can do is, is be respectful of your neighbors, do the best you can, and, and clean up that fence. So I, I'm trying to stick to really what we're accomplishing here when it comes to the outdoor use. That's what we. That's the big hurdle tonight. Uh, we can debate the size of the tracks and the objects in the play field. We, these guys were here, and just to be clear and fair to them, when we went around the first time on this, they always anticipated an outdoor uh, deal. We kicked it around. We just had no clue. We said, for lack be, of a better word, we just said, let's deal with the inside yeah. now and deal with the outside later. And here we are. And fortunately, you're all here, so you. Um, so anyhow, I, I would, guys I, and ladies, I would work for consensus, first of all, with the hours. So in an effort for a motion, Mayor, if we were looking at manufacturing division, continuing the existing hours of operation, right. uh, indoor operation running from Sunday through Thursday from 8 a.m. till 10 p.m., I'll throw out there for conversation, Friday and Saturday, 8 a.m. till 11 p.m., on the indoor and in the outdoor, eight to nine p.m. seven days a week. 
I guess my question becomes on on the, the weekends is an eight o'clock start necessary? necessary. I'm, I'm um, just trying to get started. I, I would think, you know, I I can see it on a weekday. At least in my world, everybody's kind of up and moving by eight a.m. Uh, but on the weekends, people may want to hang out a little longer in the morning before they get their day going. So kind of looking at that, I don't know how your business. Operates. I was going to say weekends are a big deal for us. So if we had like a, you know, something we're doing on a Saturday where people are coming early, I mean, Saturday's a big, big day. So, I mean, we're open. We're open. I, I just, I, um, we just thought eight, like you said, people are up and moving. Um, Not then all it, of them. <laughs> uh, I, there's, there's a difference in that. It's, it's really the traffic that does it. It's probably not the people entering your building making traffic. Um, all right, we're going to get a comment from Assistant Chief Kresic real quick. Maybe he can help us out and uh, cut down our chatter. Uh, real quickly, Mike Kresic, Fire Department. Uh, I kind of got a little disjointed from your most recent conversation, but I do want to point out one of the <laughs> items in the condition and restrictions is um, very important to the Fire Department. It's important to all city departments, but especially important to the Fire Department. Outdoor uh, recreation centers like this and especially laser tag and areas where there's decreased lighting access um, those are tricky with codes um, there are numerous codes that affect the design detection suppression and notification associated with that indoors and outdoors um, as part of the conditions of restrictions it's important that the applicants uh, abide by getting plans submitted in a timely fashion so that review can take place in a timely fashion. I think that's a very important important note with this. Um, I can't comment on any fire protection needs until I see a set of plans. Um, without those, there is no occupancy. Without plans and permits, there is no occupancy. So I think that's important to understand that. I, I think this is a fantastic plan. There's a lot of moving parts with it. We'd hate to see any delays due to absence of plans and permitting. Thank you. So, again, uh, I guess we go back to what's before us, uh, permitted outdoor use. Hours are the key. I think the hours are the only thing we have to hash out. I don't think anybody's concerned, are they, about the outdoor use? Um, I think I, I, again, I, I think we'd be prudent as a city uh, before we do okay, play field where lasers are going to, again, we had great descriptions of them, but I, I think you know, it would be wise to consult their experts, what their rules and powers that be. But we're not That's approving. The next, That's the next step, when, yeah. when they come in for that. All we're doing, though, is approving indoor versus outdoor. Everything else on the outdoor will come before. The indoor is already done. Right. So, so, so why, why and then should the we hours. hold them up on, as far as a nine o'clock start time on the weekends? You know, if they've got something going on, there's there's a lot of things that are up and running at at eight in the morning on on a Saturday, uh, or a Sunday uh, to have activities going. So I think it'll, it'd be a disservice uh, to them as a company um, if, if we had to, you know, wait till nine o'clock to. to Start up. That's just my opinion. My thought too. If they're, I mean, if they're marketing this adventure course, ninja course, they mentioned kind of like obstacle course racings. I ran a few of them. They start very early in the morning. So, I mean, I would say the earlier the better. But not and this not is all so new early. to us, so you, we don't really understand probably that clientele. Right? Exercise is new to me. <laughs> to me, <laughs> thank you. To me, <laughs> to me. Um, no, I, I, I get you. It's, it, it is a fine line, but um, understandably, yeah, people are going to want to know what's going on in the building. So those are the questions we have to grapple with. So I think we're in agreement Monday through Sunday is work for you. Yeah, I think Monday through Sunday, I think splitting indoor to outdoor, start time, I, I can be influenced either way. Uh, my neighbor cuts his grass at 8 a.m. every Saturday morning. <laughs> And I don't like it, but <laughs> but he's allowed to. So I mean, I, I'm flexible if 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 we feel that I think we got to take the residents. And I think taking off the the end the late night problem for them at nine o'clock, to me, you know, you're open till nine. Hopefully, it means that the traffic and things are all out of there by ten. 
Brian, just to clarify, you said the noise ordinance is seven, seven to, to ten. ten to ten. So they they fall within. So does my neighbor. <laughs> so, Pat, what were your hours that uh, you were suggesting then? On the uh, outdoor, the outdoor. Uh, 8 or 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on the outdoor, seven, seven days, days a week. week. Now, um, if we felt... Um, you know, they talk about some corporate events. The reason I say that, if they've got corporate after work things, I think you got to give them until 9 o'clock to get that in, that 5 to 9 window. That's, that's where uh, Sundays, do we wrap it up earlier on Sunday? I'm open to that if we think that helps. What about the indoor times? Indoor, I had um, Sunday through Thursday, Sunday night through Thursday night, 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. indoor, and then Friday and Saturday we gave them till 11 p.m. That was my suggestion. Does that work for the applicant? Yeah, that would work for us. On the, the evening time, I don't know if maybe they could consider maybe Saturday, let maybe Saturday or Friday maybe do the 10 o'clock for the outdoor. Just because that, you know, and if we do something on the weekend, you know, we would have a little bit of freedom with that. I'm, I'm, um, but I'm fine with the hours. I, my concern would be if, if, if I'm that neighbor, ten, it goes till 10. By the time people get out of there and finished, you're after that. And as I get older, I'm in bed earlier. So um, I, I think, uh, with respect to that, that I'm comfortable with leaving it. Nine, right? Or a nine for operation, right? Yeah, totally. yeah. Knowing yeah. that they're not going to be off property. So if you sell an event or something, you've got till yeah. nine to get it in. Um, maybe nothing good happened after midnight. Now I think nothing good happened after 10. So. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens in Old Creek the, stays in Old Creek. <laughs> and if the indoor is open till 11 on Friday and Saturday, that event could then move inside and wrap up everything outside then? Just to be clear, you got indoor Monday through Saturday? Uh, no, uh, indoor I have Sunday through Thursday, 8 a.m. till 10 p.m., and then Friday and Saturday, extending that from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Sunday? Um, that's part of the Sunday through Thursday. Oh, I gotcha. Outdoor. That's indoor. Outdoor. Outdoor I had, uh, hmm. looking for some... 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. Right. Seven days a week. Seven days. Consistent. Monday through Sunday. Yeah. It's straightforward, yeah. Personally, I think those early times are going to be the extreme when they're actually being used, so. Sounds good. Yeah. Just to be clear, they have to come in with concrete plans on each. Yep, they'll have to come with a site plan, building plans, setbacks. Uh, they also lighting plan. You know, we'll have review by inspector, so you don't have more than one foot candle spilled over at the lot line. So those all can be addressed at that time. Uh, you mentioned uh, condition of approval. Uh, at site plan review, something that could be uh, required would be that FAA approval for, you know, this type of outdoor use. We could put that in now? That we're no, that we could do that at site okay. plan reviews because that would be something that they, we could put on files prior to occupancy. You know, then it's checked off where condition... You could have it in here as well if you like. I guess there, there's nothing that says that you cannot. Uh, it's just one of those things where uh, it's going to be given before we can give them permits to construct their outdoor fields. We're going to need that letter on file saying it's okay. So that's why I would recommend doing it at the site plan review, saying before we even allow you to do anything, we'll review everything. But before you can actually put a shovel in the ground, you're going to have to have that FAA letter on file. That's a good idea. I, I think that, you know, nowhere in here have we even said anything about lasers, really, you know, uh, as far as control and everything. Oh. So I think. Yeah. You know, I, and again, away. I think we take it in what's in front of us. Yeah. I mean, agreed. Uh, you know, we're talking about height of structure and stuff like that. We have to see what's proposed. That'll be a site plan. They've heard the yeah. thought. And then yeah. I believe there was someone who had a question. Come on up, Ron. The question I have is, is in the spring and in the fall, 
Is this a nighttime activity? I mean, if you're letting it go till nine o'clock at night on weekends, I mean, are the do the lasers light up? How do we do that? Step up to the mic. As far as the as far as the equipment, they have small LEDs on them, six on each side for team recognition. The guns, uh, when you fire them, like we said before, there's a flash. There's a muzzle flash. There's little LEDs. It by the time it's already dispersed by the time it hits that wall. So it's just like a, it's just like, hey, that's a red person or a blue person. <laughs> that's really what it's for. Um, when a player is hit, their uh, sensor will flash. Um, again, that's these are all like something you could see in any toy at at Toys R Us. So I don't. Well, I I just have an issue with the hours. You know, I mean those uh, especially weekends and stuff like that. Uh, and you know, when it's dark in the fall and in the spring or in the winter. Are we going to be seeing these laser flashes all over the neighborhood? I don't know, you know. But like I said, you guys got to do your homework, you yeah, know, right. because when when this stuff is all in place and and you look around and say, "What the again?" Hell is, I, I think we're know? all, I, in my mind, went there automatically to a laser, like you point, like a laser pointer that you see that we used to use around here. Well, you got to remember they got the towers up there too. You know, these guys are going to be shooting out of towers. They won't have we towers unless we approve Yeah, we haven't even seen that. We haven't no even one's seen approved that. any height limitations or right. restrictions. Have we got so we haven't even looked at so. it. Yeah, it's too early for that. Yeah. Right, but again, the way they described it, and I guess, I guess a demonstration would have been worthwhile, but they described it as a TV remote control. So if you press it, 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 it flashes, and then whatever, it, it reads the TV infrared. So you never actually see a beam of light go into your television. Uh, I just learned that today. So, what's that? A lot more. Yeah, there'll actually houses. be a lot more light coming out of 80 homes across the street, probably. Yes, Carol. I'd like to invite you all to come to my house in my backyard, so you can just get a good feel for it. And and I I, to come I, I think that is prudent that we okay. visit the site. I know me and. Uh, Commissioner Chandler did when it was Green Man early on. Uh, we walked that site one day, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's a large I'd like you site. to come to my backyard so you can see how close it is. And, and, and again, for it. as we go through, if it's you know we we can have them put more vegetation in to burn. We do have but that discretion. When it, when fall comes and all the leaves are gone. Fooling you, you can see right through, you can see everything. And that 100 feet that he says, you see how his line goes straight on an angle? Well, our property isn't located that way. It's, it's located like this. And so it's only really 60 feet. There's 40 feet of a right-of-way that is um, or 20, 20 feet or 40 feet of a right-of-way on your property that they can't build on. The right-of-way is for a driveway back to our farmland. Is that what that road is? Yeah, that, that's Behind a right away for our shop, and for Gary's shop, and it's also when you go down past uh, his lot, where his lot ends, that is a right away going back to our farmland across the railroad tracks. And I'm, I don't remember how many foot, what the footage is uh, going back to the, far, uh, to the farmland at the bottom of his land. So please come to my backyard and then go over to his place and get a good feel for it. Yeah. Yeah. Just for traffic-wise, the buses. Good, good point, Pat, uh, with the buses. But again, we can't go back to the past. We're dealing with what we got. Conditions and everything like that was somebody else. We do have to hold them to, to what they say. But uh, before us is is what we're discussing now. So um, let me ask you. You know, I mean, they bring up an interesting point as the seasons change. Uh, you know, who, who's gonna? You know, it gets dark at five thirty. Are you gonna utilize that that time frame on the outdoor in the middle of winter? Well, I mean, this is a little bit different um, kind of venue. Um, we want to use it, obviously, as long as we can, as long as the seasons permit. Once it gets too cold, we're not going to be able to do a lot of the, it's like a water park, you know, things are going to start to 
probably change. We might only be able to use it during the day. And then um, we've not had an opportunity, obviously, to run the outdoor facility. Our initial facility was indoor. So um, I, with the fence, we, we already have the plan to replace the, the, the barrier there um, that, that was starting to tear down because it's been tearing down. So that, I think that'll add some obstruction. And um, like I said, really most of our activity is beyond that second set of trees, low, little lowland area there. And those are some pretty big trees too. So, I mean, we really envision most of it happened in the back and um, back, back side of the property, so. Okay. All right, any further questions? I have a comment. Yes. Um, love laser tag. Boys, I'm the big fanatic at the house. Oh, God. But I know that if those trees shed and you have abandoned cars in buildings to make it look cool, that you're going to need to block that from those, especially the new houses and these residents. Um, I want to see you go in there, but nobody wants to look at abandoned cars covered with snow even. So sure, sure. You're going to have to come up with something that, you know, that we're going to have to barricade that from the... Yeah, and there is a... The, you can, if you guys get a chance to walk to walk that property, there is a like an embankment there over on that side too. That's the mound right there. Yeah, so there. Yeah, it, it's, a berm or we're, yeah, you know, it's, we're gonna have to look at things like that. Yeah, it's it's raised up, so I mean, I'm, we're open to that stuff. So actually, where I envision the main outdoor battlefield is there's if you look at this property between those two buildings, our our plan yeah, where he is at the X right there, we'd like to build an addition. That's our plan, so we can. Exp expand that building and then behind it would be a that concrete sh stretches our main portion for what we'd call our main attraction outdoor play field um and then we want to do some other cool stuff kind of along that back gravelly area where they parked all the buses there's um what is that distant pete if you don't mind me asking i the yeah the yellow line approximate from the corner of the house here to the end at this point is 241 feet yeah, and I threw that line in there not to like just to kind of give some point of reference because I thought it might come handy because when you look at the picture, it's kind of hard to tell. So um, I think I think if when you come, if you see, you'll see there's a lot of space between us and the homeowner, and we are trying to be mindful of them. So we're not we don't want to disrespect our neighbors. Else. Uh, you'd have to come up, sir, and name and address. You've got to get on the microphone. Solve it. Solve us. Help us. My name is Dennis Cunard. I live at uh, 3404 East County Line Road. And I was just, was, you know, but people were concerned that uh, these trees would lose their leaves and things. How about putting our providers up there? They'll stay green all year long. Uh, and thank you. And that, that, that could well be. Oh comes if that ever turns into what they envision. Oh. One more thing, sorry. Uh, another thing like they, they were talking about, there's businesses right next door to us, two shops. <laughs> so there is some you know, farming land. It's not like we're surrounded by every house. Um, there's railroads that go through. There's, there's two shops next to our property, and we don't even have anything planned for that other lot there to try to, I mean... I don't know what we could do there. I would have to talk to Pete and what's what's okay, but we're, we want to be mindful of the neighbors. So, nurse Carl moves that the commission recommends that the Common Council approve the amendment to the condition restrictions as part of the conditional use permit, allowing an outdoor recreation facility on the properties at 9,000 and 9,100 South Nicholson Road. After a public hearing. And uh, with how do we amend the hours, Pete? Do I yeah, tell Pete, changes to hours of operation? As hours proposed. of operation eight C. Yep. Uh, manufacturing di division to stay the same, remain the same. Uh, indoor facility uh, to have Sunday through Thursday hours of eight a.m. to ten p.m. Friday and Saturday eight a.m. to eleven p.m. Outdoor entertainment to have hours of 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. Okay, Dick Millisecond. Roll call. 
Hickman I. Johnston I. Brillo I. Clark I. Kavich I. Krizikowski I. Brell I. Seifert I. Chandler I. Uh, guys, I just want to warn you. Don't go putting stuff in, figuring you're okay here, because this was conceptual. We had a big, big confusion here in the last year over plans coming through that were conceptual, and they just thought that was their blessing to go do what they were going to do. So keep in mind, as you narrow these down, please work with Pete, Harry, powers that be, and come back in so uh, the neighbors can get equal input and know what you're going in. Okay, um, 5B, certified survey map. Uh, for Mike and Carrie Murphy, dividing a property at 10855 South 10th Avenue. Carrie. The applicant is requesting the approval to create one new uh, building lot. It would be at the northwest corner of the property. You'll notice on the CSM that there are wetlands and floodway identified. Parcel 1 would not be affected by any of those natural features. And the uh, wetland delinea delineation information is contained on the, um, on the CSM. For the water and sewer utility, public sanitary sewer in Elm Road will need to be extended from the west when that property is developed, so parcel one, and the cost to do so would be borne by the developer. That is, rec that is noted in the condition number one under the staff recommendation. There are no other issues that we had received from staff. Staff's recommendation is that the plan commission recommends to the Common Council that the certified survey map submitted by Mike and Carrie Murphy for the property at 10855 South 10th Avenue be approved with conditions one and two. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, we do have one speaker. Uh, Anne is the applicant here. You may, you may be called upon. Uh, Mr. Con Conrad? Oh, Unar. Sorry. Uh, name and address again, please. My name is Dennis Cunard. I'm at, uh, I live at 3404 East County Line Road. I was just looking. I thought they was going to divide this whole thing up into a bunch of different properties. But apparently I must have been misled. <laughs> Happens. So, so apparently they're looking at parcel one. They're going to build a house over there. And the rest is pretty much going to stay the way it is. At this time, the parcel one is the one that is being divided off for development. You are correct. Oh, then I don't have a problem with it. Uh, council? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Come on in, sir. Name and address, please. Uh, Tim Gallagher. I live at 3351 East Elm Road, which is directly west of that proposed property. One thing I'll tell you about that property, and you can't see it right now, but come first week of March and through almost mid-May, that property, a good part of it is underwater. There's flooding there, and there is a lot of water, not just a little bit. And where they staked this house, it looked like they staked out a house there, and where those stakes were, they were in water. Are, are you on parcel one or two or? I don't know how you show it. I'm I'm right next to it. Part yeah, I'm looking at parcel one there. I'm just to the west of that. Okay. Man, I don't have a problem with somebody doing something with their land, but this is, if I remember right, this is all the Wagner property at one point, and they've added houses along that property all along. At no point did I ever see him add any stormwater detention or anything for, for you know, water that does pile up down there quite a bit. There's a lot of water down there, particular times of year. It's just something to think about. That where that shows wetland, it it gets wetter than what you see on it indicated as wetland. It there's a lot of water there. Okay. Yeah. It's not shown here, but uh, wetlands. Yeah. Questions. Brian. It, there is a large floodplain that's on that property as well. That's bigger than the wetlands shown out there. 
Um, that's the outside dash line is all floodplain, and there is a lot of water down there. A lot of water. And I, it, I just would think that if we're going to have more development here, which there has been, and I have no objection to somebody wanting to do something with their property, but we've got to start planning for this, where this water is going to go when a house goes in. Because I know when our house goes in, we pump out water from, you know, from our sump pump and everything. It goes somewhere. Okay. Uh, Wally? Okay, Kerry, uh, under the technical corrections, does that uh, mean also that Steve Scafidi's name is changed on here? To Okay, that's technical. Yep, that would be correct. And okay. the applicant's consultant has been made aware of that. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Can the applicant come on up? Just... Uh, name and address, please. Uh, Michael Murphy, 3900 Hazel Branch Lane. I'm Casey Masterson. I live at N5W31720 Twin Oaks Drive. I'm the builder. Okay. Uh, obviously, just to confirm what the neighbor said, you're, you're splitting a parcel, so you can Get a residential lot there and uh, correct um, concerns about the water I mean it's gonna be your house built in the floodway I uh, I've drove by there since I purchased the property just about every day I haven't seen any standing water there I know that it floods in the back by the wetlands but a lot of that's because of the creek back there being backed up but I was told that it's actually the city's problem they should be cleaning it up yeah I can speak to the water Property. Um, I think there was a bunch of survey work. Oh, I'm sorry, my my fault. I think there was a bunch of survey work done by the same surveying company um, before the property was transferred last time, uh, and they delineated all the wetland and the floodplain and everything like that. So the location that we've got cited for the house, being in the northwest corner, is going to be as far from that flood area as possible. Um, we've also the, the property is quite a bit lower than the street elevation there as well and so we've taken that into account with the building plants as well so we're raising the house up a little bit bringing the driveway up and then creating negative pitch away from the house to make sure that that water any water that would come out of the wetlands I mean obviously it's going to stay within that flood area that's why the flood area is designed where it is or it's identified as being in that particular area but we're going to have some negative slope away from the house or there's going to be several feet of elevation change similar to the property to the west. Um, so the top of foundation wall with the proposed residents that we'll be bringing in for building permit application later is gonna be similar to that of the property to the west. So as their yard slopes off and meets the natural grade of the creek running south and then to the west, we don't anticipate any, any changes to the way that the water flows currently. Um, see the survey map was done just this May. Uh, Brian, when was this the last time they did a delineation of the flood plan? And can we just take this as gospel? Yeah, they did the wetland delineation in 2015. Um, that's when they, was it one lot that they split off? Um, I think that's where the old farmhouse was, if I'm remembering correctly. And they split that off and sold that separately. And that's when they delineated the, the wetlands and also um, dedicated the easement for that drain. Hate to see someone putting a home in trouble in that lot. Yeah, I mean, there's really two. There's, I, don't, there's, I don't mean to offend a lot, you know, that you bought the lot, but uh, hate to see water water problems right off the get go. Right. Yeah, we, and we appreciate that. The uh, there's really two, you know, potential causes of water concerns with with the residents: surface water. So if you have poor drainage away from the house um, because you don't have that negative slope going away from the house to carry that surface water that comes down and hits, hits the ground away from the house, then you can have that water sort of pushing up against the foundation. The other is groundwater, so that elevation coming up and out. So this property is considerably lower than everything else around there. So you've got that creek that, that comes from the north, northeast, I believe, and then wraps around to the south. So when that property fills up or when you've got a lot of water from, you know, from snow melt in the winter and in the springtime and spring rains, that water is coming through there and it sits down in there because that's lower elevation than kind of everything else around there. So the house is going to be in the far northwest. It's going to be coming up considerably. So the surface water we don't seem to be concerned with um, because of the house elevation. I mean, it's going to be several feet above the existing grade. And then the groundwater elevation, we've done some test pits out there to at different times of the year to determine what the groundwater elevation is at that high water mark. 
Um, and so we don't think that's going to be an issue either. Well, I mean, this is going to be a, you know, this is going to be a fairly expensive house. Um, it's a very large investment for the homeowner. So we're taking a lot of precautions to make sure that we're not going to be putting a house in a position where they're going to have issues with it. Is this, uh, sewer and water? Is it serviced by sewer? Yeah, there's municipal sewer in Elm, in Elm Road. So there's municipal sewer that services the property just to the west. That'll have to be extended to the east. So the sewer main will come through the, the right of way through the ditch. And I believe that's MMSD sewer line. So there's going to be uh, there's going to be a plan drawn up for that. That's going to have to be approved by MMSD and then a lateral that'll come off from that. So we'll put a Y in the main there. So if at any point in the future the sewer was going to extend further east down Elm Road, that Y would be in there. And then the other portion of the Y would be a lateral servicing this property. Um, the municipal water is further to the northeast there, servicing the subdivision just to the north of Elm Road. Um, according to Ron Pritzloff, I believe we don't need to hook up to municipal water there, so we plan to do an on-site well, um, just because of the distance to the water is 350 or 400 feet or something like that, so it's cost prohibitive to connect to the water, um, but the sewer main is very close by. Yes, Brian. Just one clarification. Yep. It is an MIS sewer that is in Elm Road, so that is a connection point that is out in front. So from that connection point, you'll have to extend a public sanitary main across the frontage of the property with a lateral coming off of it. So that needs plans and MSD approval. You can't tie directly into that MIS sewer. Um, that sewer is deep, and there's issues when that went in I believe there's a soil issues in that area. Mm -hmm. So just something to consider when that's going through. Yep, and we've had those conversations. It's been a number of months now, so that those details aren't fresh, but we've got documents and we've got uh, bids solicited from contractors to do the work. We've got the information that we need to submit the plans for approval. Thank you. I think we got the resident phone. Say a word. Yeah, when they did extend or hook us up to that sewer, um, they had to dig down pretty deep, and the road almost did collapse because of the soil conditions there. It was a real issue. Matter of fact, the guy we hired to do it uh, said if he had to do it over again, he wouldn't have taken the job because of how bad it was. Um, I do have a question. Is it going to be an ex expense to us for that extension that would be on our property? Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say no, that's on. Okay, then I'm fine with that. Yeah, Brian. Thank you. It is deep. You're right. You're right about that. Anybody? Okay. In particular, make a motion that the plan commission recommend to the common council that the certified survey map submitted by Mike and Kerry Murphy for the property of 10855 South 10th Avenue be approved with the following two conditions. Number one, they all require water for extensions and connections are coordinated with the Oak Creek Water and Sewer Utility, and any associated de development agreements are coordinated with the engineering department, and that all extension and connection costs shall be borne by the developer. Number two, that all technical corrections, including but not limited to spelling errors, minor coordinate geometry corrections, and corrections required for compliance with the municipal code and Wisconsin statutes are made prior to recording. Two for seconds. Roll call. Dickman, I. Johnston, I. Brother, I. Borak, I. Oops, sorry. Borak, I. <laughs> Abbott. Wizakowski, I. Corell, I. Super, I. Chandler, I. Excellent. Uh, that is all we have other than a uh, long awaited adjournment. Carrillo, Carrillo uh, moves to adjourn at 740. Wizakowski, I'll second. Roll call. Dickman, I. Johnston, I. Brother, I. Borak, I. Gave a chime. Fizikowski, yeah. For LA. Super time. Laura. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank our staff, our IT guy, um, everybody coming out that supports us. Uh, again, please get out there, discover, and celebrate Oak Creek. Thank you.